After graduating college in 2008 with a bachelor's degree in political science and philosophy, I was recruited by the United States Peace Corps to serve as a health and HIV AIDS volunteer in South Africa. I started researching. South Africa, I learned, had more people living with HIV AIDS than any other country in the world, about 12% of the population, almost 20% among adults. And I learned that only about a quarter of those with advanced HIV AIDS were receiving antiretroviral treatment. In the first decade of the 21st century, almost half of all deaths in South Africa can be attributed to AIDS. I flew into Johannesburg with a cohort of about 25 other, mostly young people. We arrived to our training site, and for two months, we lived with host families, began learning Zulu and other Nguni languages, had uh, workshops on culture, learned about a, a bit of South African history, and ate locusts for the first time. Then, about four weeks into this, we received our HIV AIDS training. It consisted of little more than a screening of a documentary film on the subject of AIDS. Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Peace Corps comrades, it is high time we clear the air and publicly acknowledge this elementary truth concealed under a barrage of PR and myth. The Peace Corps in its present manifestation functions largely as a government-sponsored study abroad program for privileged youth. The fact of the matter is approximately 85% of Peace Corps volunteers are recent college graduates with little or no professional experience, or what the agency euphemistically calls flexible generalists. Their median age is 25, and each one costs taxpayers, on average, $93,000 for two years of service. Most of these volunteers are no doubt well-intentioned. A precocious few work miracles and are worth every dollar you've spent on them. Many, by virtue of having a foot in the developed world, manage to at least obtain grants and other resources for local organizations, schools, and libraries. Um, I count myself in this camp. And others still regard the Peace Corps as a post-college hangout, a resume builder, and a taxpayer finance stopgap for the swing years before grad school. It's no coincidence that SEPA is home to so many former Peace Corps volunteers, while the Peace Corps is home to so few SEPA graduates. Now, I'm not against study abroad programs, but we have to ask ourselves, is another educational opportunity for people of privilege really an appropriate, let alone optimal response to poverty and problems as grand and tragic as the HIV AIDS pandemic. Grateful as I am for my experience in the Peace Corps, I recognize that the developing world cannot just be a training ground for young idealistic Americans. The problems in communities like the one I lived in are far too serious for that. If we believe we have some role to play in the development of other countries, then we should, at a minimum, adhere to the following ethical standards. We should commit to sending only our best, skilled professionals with expertise that hosting communities have reason to value. That's pragmatic solidarity. Enthusiasm by itself is not enough. When President Kennedy first publicly introduced the idea for a Peace Corps in 1960, he asked his audience at the University of Michigan, how many of you who are going to be doctors are willing to spend your days in Ghana? In another speech that same year, he spoke of a volunteer corps made up of Americans of whatever age who, are willing to, who, are, who wish to serve the great republic and the cause of freedom, men who have taught or engineers or doctors or nurses. Observe the caliber of volunteers Kennedy Dream would make up the Peace Corps. What he envisioned was a development agency comprising skilled professionals capable of making a material difference in the lives of the poor. We can, I believe, recapture the idealism of the early 1960s and make real Kennedy's dream of an effective Peace Corps. In recent years, the agency has made a number of enlightened moves in this very direction. It launched a program called Peace Corps Response, which is open exclusively to former volunteers and, quote, seasoned professionals who have at least 10 years of proven work experience. Skilled professionals are sent on high-impact assignments lasting 3 to 12 months. As with traditional Peace Corps, Peace Corps Response volunteers are integrated into the communities they are meant to serve. This is something the Peace Corps does very well and something that I think is often lacking in more conventional aid programs. So here, too, there is time for cross-cultural exchange, but the work is targeted and substantive from the outset. And just this past year, the Peace Corps launched an initiative called Global Health Service Corps. This July, for the first time since Kennedy's speech more than half a century ago, the agency will send out a contingent of actual physicians and nurses to help fill a critical need for medical personnel in Malawi, Tanzania, and Uganda. These are positive, constructive steps forward, and the Peace Corps community, especially 
the 200,000 plus former volunteers needs to get behind them and push the Peace Corps further in this direction. The agency needs to remove the barriers that keep professionals from joining, even if it means introducing student loan forgiveness and financial compensation. And recruitment itself needs to take place beyond uh, career fairs for undergrads at graduate schools um, and, other, and technical programs within labor unions and other professional associations. Where's the camera? Here it is. Come here, Peace Corps recruiters. Come to SEPA. Recruit these guys. Recruit Professor Stieglitz. I believe that in the next 50 years of its existence, the Peace Corps can be a force for good in the world. Properly equipped with skilled volunteers matched with organizations and communities that need them, it has potential to dramatically improve people's lives, and not just those of the volunteers. When the Peace Corps proves itself successful in meeting its first stated goal, helping the people of interested countries meet their need for trained men and women, it will, I do not doubt, be looked to by other countries as a model worth replicating. If we harness the expertise of our doctors, nurses, engineers, farmers, certified teachers and professors, and employ it where it is most critically needed, we can and will make a better world. Thank you.